Growing in Christ, 40 Days to Deeper Faith, Arnie Cole and Michael Ross, Day 4, Growing Up God. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. Luke chapter 2 verses 46 47 for a young men in jewish culture a boy's 12th birthday marks his passage into manhood and the beginning of some important new stuff to think about establishing his identity mission and beliefs jesus is 12 nearly 13 when his parents take him to jerusalem for the feast of the passover reaching jerusalem from nazareth requires a four-day trek over the harsh terrain where thieves and outlaws lurk, so many people from their town travel as a group. When they arrive, Jerusalem is bursting with noisy celebration. Each day, hundreds of people stream into one temple gate with their sheep, while hundreds more stream out another, carrying bloody guts of meat and the hide of the carcass of the animal they have sacrificed. As the week-long feast comes to a close, Mary and Joseph begin their grueling trip home. As Mary walks with other women, she probably figures Jesus is with Joseph, while Joseph figures he is with her. It's quite a shock when they get together in the evening and discover he isn't with either of them. Mary and Joseph first comb the camp, and then spent three days searching the streets of Jerusalem. They hit all the festival attractions that should interest a boy of Jesus' age, never imagining that he'd be hanging out with religious scholars in the temple. But there he is, politely listening and asking questions of the top teachers, amazing all of them with his solid insights and answers. Like any mom, Mary is upset when she finally lays eyes on her son. Here's how author Walter Wondering Jr. recreates the scene. Mary flew around the pillar and found some ten men sitting in the circle, old men, young men, and a boy. Rabbis they were, teachers and students, and Yeshi, she shouted. All talking came to a bolt. Yeshi, what are you doing here? Everyone turned and looked at her. Jesus turned too, but with level eyes and a maddening calm. A rabbi said, The lad is studying the law. He has a marvelous understanding. Mary hardly heard him. She ran to Jesus and took his face between her hands. What have you done to us? She hissed. She was going to cry. Therefore, she shouted at the top of her lungs, Your father and I have been searching the city for days. I would never have treated my parents like this. Yeshi, I have been dying with worry. Mama, the boy said, why did you have to search? What? What are you saying? But didn't you know where I would be? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Mary stopped shouting. She released her son's face, seeing pink marks where her hands had squeezed him. No, she didn't understand these things which he said. Neither she understand him. Let's explore together Luke chapter 2 verses 41-52. Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? These are the earliest words of Jesus quoted in the New Testament. Before this time, no one had ever referred to God as my father. No one had ever spoken about the Creator in such a personal, intimate way. From these few words, we discover a huge, myth-shattering truth about how our young Messiah thinks. He knew his true identity was serving God and doing his will. 
How does a 12-year-old already realize so much about his responsibilities? He knows that he has responsibility to his parents, but that responsibility to do his father's wills comes first. He did not distract it by the fact that he knows his actions will cause his parents to worry. He accepts his place in this life. He belongs to his father's house. His focus is on eternity. Selfish desires and living for the moment aren't even an issue. Even though he was both fully human and fully God, Jesus was able to know completely who he was early in life. We can't understand it. No one knows how much he had to keep his frail, human side in check to stay committed to his values. But as a young man, Jesus shows he did understand who he was, a son to his parents. He returns home with Mary and Joseph, respecting their authority, and the fact that he's a God's son doesn't inflate his ego. He shows humility and still accepts his identity in both heaven and earth. Even for Jesus, sometimes it was difficult to keep his responsibilities and beliefs straight. He understands our struggles because he went through them too. Although he caused his parents worry, he never sinned. His journey to manhood was on the right path because his course was set by God. So don't even forget to ask yourself, how did Jesus think? Let's think different about ourselves. In the world's eyes, our identity is wrapped up in who we know, what we do, or how we look. But in our Heavenly Father's eyes, what matters is whose we are, His. God doesn't value anyone else in the world more than you. He knows you completely, better than you know yourself. And to Him, you are the one of a kind, priceless and loved beyond belief. Let's think about it. Does this truth change the way you see yourself? Since the human life is precious to God, how should this change the way we see others? Please comment your answers below. Let's think about the truth. Check out this can't miss insight from J.I. Parker, a Christian scholar who has written several life-changing books. We were all created to be God's image barriers. We are made in such a way, I believe, that we are only at peace with ourselves when it's God's truth that our minds are grasping and continuously obeying. Human life is lacking dignity until you get to that point. Let's work it out. Define your values in three sentences or even less. Now. Connect your definition to J.I. Parker's quote above. Finally, tell why maturity means standing up for what's right and living by your convictions, not what the world says it's right. Now let's pray together. Lord, help us to think as Jesus thinks and see ourselves as you see us. Jesus, give us courage to seek answers to questions and humility to accept them and the faith to commit our desires fully to you. We ask you, Lord, bring the sources of your truth into our lives and mold us into the new man that you want us to be. We ask you, lead us and help us to become more Christ-like, to be and image barriers of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for living in us. You are teaching us and molding us each day. We thank you. We worship you, God of our Father. You are Father to us as you are Father to Jesus Christ. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are filling our minds, our souls, and our spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, dear friends. 
We thank you for listening to this podcast. We hope that these podcasts help you to grow deeply in Christ. Please like and subscribe. See you on the next video.